was the, the annual care service will take place this evening in Glen Hoy Presbyterian Church at half seven. All those reading a passage of scripture will be given an order of service which will contain their reading so that they know when they are required to do so. The offering lifted during the service will go to tear fund. And the midweek, all those who attend midweek are invited to come to the manse on Wednesday the 20th of December for, for some fellowship and night refreshments. And the youth fellowship for those aged P7 upwards will meet next Friday, meet now next Friday on the 22nd of December at 5.45 in the church car park to go carriage singing in the local area. This will be followed by pizza in the Bailey Hall, after which parents can pick their young people up at half eight. Christmas morning service is in Clare Presbyterian Church here at half ten. The retiring offering will go to support the work of the Northern Ireland Children's Hospice. And the youth club will take a break over the Christmas and New Year break and meet next on Friday the 19th of January next year. Sunday school, there will be no Sunday school on the 24th or the 31st of December, nor on the 7th of January. It resumes on the 14th of January. And children are staying in the service as there's a family service today. Children stay in. That's all announcements and I'll hand over to Alan. If you've got your Bible with you, we're going to turn today to the book of Matthew, Matthew and chapter 2. Matthew in chapter 2, the visit of the Magi. We're going to read how these men, these three wise men, came along and they came to worship the King of Kings. Matthew in chapter 2, verses 1 through to 12. Let's join and read this together. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. And they had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law. He asked them where the Christ was to be born, in Bethlehem in Judea. They replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of many people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may too go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And coming to the house, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And we finish there at verse 12. We know that God will bless the public reading of his precious word of truth to each one of our hearts today. So you all can't come to the front, all right? You just have to stay there. But I don't know. I think it's a certain, there's something flashing in the corner. What's flashing in the corner? That sounds bad. But what's flashing in the corner? Who's going to shout out? There's a tree flashing. Well, the tree's not flashing. The lights are flashing. You may get that fixed. There's something wrong with it. If my house was like that, my wife would be giving off to me. But listen, that's a sign of Christmas, isn't it? Who's got one of them in their house? Half of you have anyway. That's sad. I'll get you a tree. So well for next year. But listen, no, um, that's a sign of Christmas. But I was just thinking, what's Christmas all about? What's it all about, boys and girls, and young at heart? What's it all about? Now let's think, what's it all about? Let's see, the Christmas tree, it's about, that's right. How could you forget? It's about Jesus. Isn't Christmas about Jesus? Okay, so you remember that. Christmas is about Jesus. But see, for me, what I do, I'm a man of leisure. All counsellors are like that. No, some of them work really hard, but I turn up for work. And, uh, and I go, what I do? 
I go to what this man here does. If anyone knows what this man does. Now, if you don't know what this man does, well, you'll, you'll soon get, get what he does. But he goes to craft fairs. And that's what I do, Christmas craft fairs. And I love it. I've been to about 30 or 40 of them. And I haven't a penny left, right? Who goes to craft fairs? And we, we markets and stuff aren't they great to go to? They're brilliant to go to. But what happens is, I always have to put a pound in the pocket, or even more, because I have a habit of buying things. Because at Christmas, we buy things. Because Christmas is all about, well, it's all about Jesus. But it's about presents as well, isn't it? Buying presents and giving them to someone else. Now I've got the car here, I'm in the big car. If anyone wants to give me a gift going home, I'll take it. I want you to know that. Even a nice dinner down the road at Kelly Hebron, I'll take a wee voucher. It doesn't really matter. If someone's very keen to do that, I'll not turn it away. But it's good to give, give gifts, isn't it? So I brought my bag. And in my bag, I've been at the craft fairs. Now, I do apologize at this point. I haven't bought a hand off you yet. All right. Okay, at this point. Okay, this time next year, it could be a whole new ball game. But I have been around the craft fair. So the, one of the first things I needed um, for Christmas. Now, I notice this. Let's have a wee look. We're all in our suits there. You know, and even I'm in my suit. This is a new one, you know. Since I went on to council, I had to get a bigger waistline. And so I've got a new suit. And, uh, but I'm going to lose it next year. But one of the first things I bought, because I know it's Christmas, is this. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? Has anyone got one like that? Okay. So you know one's admitting it. Those are Christmas jumpers. For goodness sake, get into the spirit. Um, this is mine. And you know what? I turned up at every council meeting in this. And people look at me. The DEP always said, I'll oh, need not wear a suit. And I, but I do, at times. But I wear this because it's Christmas. Because we've got it into a festive spirit. So this is my, um, my wee uh, jumper. So I've got this, I'm all sort of, now, what else? Uh, I got this at a craft fair. Oh, you got that. I will see. You got that. They told me this. Right, you got that, look. It's a unicorn, right? But they told me if I put hot water in this, that it would change color, and it doesn't. They had me on, and I'll never find that person again. They're from Cork or somewhere, and I'll never get that, but I got that. But it's a nice present for someone. Wrap it up, look apart, they'll say thank you. So I got that there. I like these wee nifty things. A lot of this stuff's homemade, uh, and uh, like these things here, I think, I don't know. These are homemade, oh, I like those. There it goes. You like ones? Oh, do you? Do you? I'll share that with you. I've only two. Um, look, mince pies. Oh, we're creaming on. That's the problem. I need another suit after Christmas. But look, see mince pies? Look, see mince pies? Look, right, so that's mince pies. We do a lot of eating over Christmas, maybe too much eating. So that's my mince pies. So what else have I? Ah, I got this. Nice wee hat. That'll fit you, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? But you'll maybe get one of those at Christmas. That's a wee hat. Know how I know that's brand new? Because I haven't took the label off it yet. Okay, so maybe I'll wrap that up and give it to someone a wee hat. All right, nice wee hat. But look what this one says, look. Can you read that? Moon. My wife thinks that's where I'm from. Look, moon, look. Ah, oh, took you a minute there. Look, moon. Now, it says moon. Can you see what's below that? Jill. Gelato, gelato. Gelato, what's gelato? <coughs> Ice cream, that's right. They're all right. Is that Italian? Is that Italian? I don't know Italian. All I know is, I went, imagine going to an ice cream shop at a winter market, and I went to him three times. He gave me hot chocolate free every time. That's why I kept going back. But I thought to myself, I've drunk that much hot chocolate, um, and I told him to try the ice cream about July, and he said, from Mora, but I'll buy a hat off him. So I've got a wee hat. A good wee hat. A scrapey wee hat. So I've got my hat. You like my hat? Right. Who else is not here? Ah, this is the gear. Give you a clue. Now look. See this wee box here. Great. Don't know. Give you a wee clue. You're knocking myself out there. Um, what's that? 
Men, you'll be getting this. Aftershave, good man. And I know that she's got you loads of it. I know that for Christmas. And look, aftershave, okay, young people, be careful with this, it can be stingy. Um, but there, the aftershave, all oh, these wee gifts. That's brilliant. Oh, I got this here. Now, can everyone see this? This is the thing, I'll give you a wee clue. Can you see that? You can see that. Can you see what that says? Not everyone can see that. Okay. You can see it. Not everyone can see that. Okay. There's the minister's wife then. I never knew she was in. Can you see that? I'll give you a mention. All right. All right. Can you see that? Sometimes you can. Don't let on you and say that you can't see it now, but you have to look at it. It's well made. A wee carpenter has made this. Okay. Tommy, can you see it? Can you see it? Ah, see what it says. All right. Can you see it? No, sometimes you can't see it. Ah. You have to look at it. You'll be looking at it after, you'll see it. Everyone can see it. Some people can see it straight away. Can you see that? No? You'll look at it later. All right? Some people can see it straight away, what it says. Assume someone knows what it says, yeah? Good. Can you see it? Good. Okay. Oh, I'm exhausted. At least I'm losing weight going up and down here. Okay. You see that? Yeah? Okay, I'll put that there. We'll talk about that later. What did I say at the start what Christmas was about? Jesus, same Jesus. Right, that says Jesus. Now, the man that made that is a retired Presbyterian minister, but I'm sure other retired ministers of faith can make something like that. But he's a carpenter. Maybe that's what he did first. So I asked David McConaughey, Reverend David McConaughey, called him. He's a man about his 80s. His daughters are involved in the church which I would speak in. David's a lovely man, and well, I can see it there from there. Yeah, sometimes you see it from a distance. Because that's what Christmas is about. It's about Jesus. We have to remember that. Yes, with the gifts and the presents. Now, here's another couple. Now, I'm, now these are not earrings, all right? Now, I acquired these on Thursday, so be careful if you were in the same location as me on Thursday, okay? Health and safety, exactly. He was there because I chatted to him, but he didn't buy me a coffee either. Look, health and, you need that. Health and safety executive of Northern Ireland. See the wee key rings? They were free. <laughs> I lifted them. But there's loads of things free. I had enough coffee and wee buns all day at that place, and I'm not even a dairy farmer. But they were free, so I, but they're only free when someone gives you them. That's when they're important. When you give a gift to someone, you say, you know, rather than just taking them, you can say, I want this, I want that. Christmas can be like that. But it's nice when you get a surprise. I'm so excited what my wife's going to get me at Christmas. I'm so excited. I hope she does get me something. But I'm so excited because it's nice when something's wrapped up and you receive it. It's so lovely to receive something nice. I got these given to me. The man, Harry, was sitting there. I took a photograph, me and Harry, and another Harry. says, sure, take those couple with you. So that reminds me to be safe on the farm. Because it says that. That reminds me to be safe on the farm. But one last one. Now this, this one's class. Oh, no, there's a couple. I'll do this one. Now, can you see that? Mud. Mud. Right, I went to a shop in Mora, and they packed it up well, and in this is a brilliant gift, mud. And what it is, is, I'll not open it because I want to give it to somebody for Christmas. <laughs> it's a cup, it's handmade, a potter. This young family have started up a shop in Mora and make pottery, and they he sits at the wheel and he makes what he's thinking about. So he thinks about it and he uses his hands because he's gifted and he makes it into a cup or a saucer or whatever. I could have bought a full set for the price I paid for that in Tesco's. But that's by the way, but that's a great gift. And that's a great gift for everybody. And I could give that gift to someone. I wonder who's going to get that gift. I don't know. I don't know who I'm going to give that gift to. I'm not really sure. Lastly, this is the ticket, this stuff here. This is the ticket. 
Now you probably think it's coffee because I talk about coffee, but look, what's that? Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. And this isn't any old hot chocolate. This is hot chocolate from Porter Down. And <laughs> <laughs> this is hot chocolate. Who likes hot chocolate? Oh, oh everybody. Oh, this is my hot chocolate. All right. I'll probably give this to the biggest family, I maybe do this, but you might be allergic to this hot chocolate because it's, it's brewed from India. It's this guy that I met. You see, when I buy all this stuff, what happens is I get talking. My wife sends me out and says, I'm going to the Christmas market. And three hours later, I'll rock back. What were you doing? We're talking to two people. You know what I mean? Like, um, but what I do is I buy something. And I come to a Christian person like this, and I can talk to a Christian person like this. Well, he knows the Lord. But see these people here, especially this one here that owns that, he doesn't know Jesus. Know how I know he doesn't know Jesus? Because I asked him. It's as simple as that. I still bought the hot chocolate off him. I still took an interest in the hot chocolate he was selling me. And I said, he gave me a wee taster. Now, there was a different man. All I'd done was hot chocolate there the other evening. There was a different man from the gelato man. He was trying to sell ice cream on a cold winter's night. I told him he wasn't wise. He was safer sticking to the hot chocolate. But I said I'd do that during the summer, give him ice cream, or go and see him, because I want to see him again too. Because maybe I want to tell him about Jesus. And we all do that. When we buy something off someone, we pay for it. We pay the price for it. That there was £7.50, I think. I remember a figure like that, but that will last me for a good year anyway. But no, um, what's in that's important. I was looking up the ingredients, and it's, there's five spices in it. There's cinnamon, there's cloves, there's nutmeg. Um, there's chocolate, there's coca. It's not just where the chocolate bar and you melt it and that's it. This is a special mix, special brew. And he learnt this in India. He went to India and when he came home he couldn't get anything like this. So he says, I'll make this. So he's a young entrepreneur. So you have to support people like that, take an interest in what they're doing. And that's often the case as us as Christians. Sometimes when someone we pass people by, Jesus never passed people by. Those three wise men, and the three wise men we're reading in the passage, they weren't going to pass Jesus by. They were looking for Jesus. There was a star there up in the skies, and they knew if they followed that star, they would come and see Jesus. They needed a pointer, and we boys and girls and Young at heart, we're all pointers to Jesus because we can invite someone new here at any Sunday. But we can tell people about Jesus. We can just be bold and courageous because we need to do that. Yes, I get my hot chocolate and that will last me for a certain length of time. I don't know how long it will last me. I knew I opened it the other day, but I had no milk. <laughs> so, so I didn't open it. I'm glad I didn't because I wouldn't have brought it with you when it was half open. And, but if you smelt this, all the aroma of this stuff is powerful. Is there ever like Jesus? Have you tasted Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you know it's not about the Christmas presents, the Christmas tree, and Santa Claus, and all those things? They're the most brilliant thing. I love it. I love Christmas morning. When the man in the red suit arrives, I love all that. And I love Christmas. And I love reading a bit, and the wee nap in the afternoon. I love all that. But it goes by. But what doesn't pass by is Jesus. Those wise men did not pass Jesus by. There was this guy called Herod, and he was a wicked king. And he said to the wise men, it's a bit like my cup. Remember the cup that you meant to put that water in it meant to change color? Took me for a, uh, you know, but I didn't, you know, I believed them. I believed that person. And they were telling a lie. Well, it was King Herod was doing that too. He told those wise men, listen, if you find Jesus, tell me, and I'll come and worship him too. He did not want to worship Jesus. He did not want to worship Jesus. He wanted to kill Jesus. But God had his hand upon Jesus. He has his hand upon each one of us. Because it says there in Scripture, Emmanuel, God with us. That's another name for Jesus. God with us. So when I'm going through the market and talking to people, you can't do it yourself. You'd say, God, help me turn this conversation around to tell people about Jesus. And sometimes it doesn't work. But then you have opportunity because you can keep contact because you can see this guy's on Facebook. This guy has a www. He, he's from Porter Down. I could go and drink this and drink more and help him with his business, but I could tell him about Jesus. 
The wise men came to worship Jesus. And what did they give, boys and girls? Didn't they give them gifts? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh giving gifts. That's why we give gifts to people. It's the right thing to do. But what is the greatest gift at this Christmas time? It's knowing Jesus. The greatest gift is receiving Jesus. I wonder, boys and girls and young at heart, have you received Jesus as your own and personal Savior? Opportunity arises every day, every minute, every second to trust in Jesus. You can still have fun. You still can have joy. But those wise men came along to worship Jesus. Then they went another way. But the thing was, they found Jesus. They found him in that personal way. Do you know Jesus? Have you found Jesus? Have you trusted in Jesus? Christmas is not about mince pies. And all the goings on, of course, I love it. I love to see, I, I, I'm responsible for maybe 30 Christmas trees in the area, and no one's ever happy with a Christmas tree. Not that I put them up, but they just complain to me if they're not happy with it. And I said, do you want one outside your house next year? Us politicians say, I'll get that done for you. So don't promise that. It's easy to say words, but it's not easy to repent of sin and trust in Jesus. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's you and that's me. That's all the bad things that we do. All we have to do is trust in him, repent of our sin, and ask him into our lives. And see that journey of life? It will be up and down, it will be round and round. There will be hand wounds, there will be good days. But what you do know is that God is with you. God is with you every moment and every second of your life. Emmanuel, God with us. Hey, Father God, thank you for your provision for each one of us. We're never stuck. A roof over our head and a food in our mouth. Yet Jesus had nowhere to find a bed. But he came into this world ultimately to save each one of us. That each one of us trust in him even today. Thank you for the joy of Christmas. Just pray for every family here, every head represented here, every, every person that is in this room, that they have a joyful Christmas. For those that are struggling with the things of life, bring them that peace that surpasses understanding. You're the God of peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.